Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video today and welcome back to Premier League predictions. Premier League week one did go with the VAR and that made a real big headlines in the first week of, of being introduced to the Premier League. I will go across them points as we go through my predictions for week two. So guys, you know what to do. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and let's go. So the first game we're going to talk about is Arsenal versus Burnley. Now Arsenal obviously beating Newcastle 1-0. Burnley beating Southampton 3-0. Um, I was not that expecting that result. Um, especially what I've heard about Southampton this summer and what I've seen. Um, I was expecting maybe Southampton to get one or two goals. But yet again, VAR did play his part in the Burnley game. Um, not a goal I'm going to really talk about, but Burnley scored VAR, ruled it out for offside, I do believe. But obviously, VAR did get caused more than once this week, so I will talk about a lot more of the other decisions. Um, but as far as this game goes, I'm going to give it to Arsenal, and I'm going to go for a 2-1 Arsenal win. My next one is Aston Villa versus Bournemouth. Aston Villa losing 3 to Tottenham after going 1-0 up. Bournemouth won all with Sheffield United. Well, they make the same mistake Gary Lineker did. Um, Villa, I thought they did alright against Tottenham. I'm not going to lie. I thought when they went 1-0 up, whether it's, you know, um, a bit out, you know, a foul or, you know, um, I thought when I went one new up and I was watching the game and uh, I thought Tottenham ain't going to get back into this. And then Tottenham got that one goal and then they got the second goal and then Villa just opened up. I've seen that a lot within the first few weeks of the Premier League and Championship League 1 and 2. Um, I think what teams need to do, teams like Villa anyway, is not to panic. Um, but as far as this result goes, I'm going to go for a draw and I'm going to go for a one all scoreline for that one. My next one is Brighton over Albion versus West Ham. Now West Ham losing 5 0 to City, a few um, VAR points, but it's on the main City end, so I'll talk about that when I get to the Manchester City game. Brighton, on the other hand, did have their own um, VAR decisions. Um, one was uh, my, the ball hit Glenn Murray's arm uh, while jumping up from the free kick from Watford. Um, it hit his arm, but I think the reason why the ref didn't give it, and it's only my opinion, do feel free to express yours and comment and whatever down below. Um, I think because he had his arm rigid, as rigid as you can get, I think that's why I didn't give the handball to Glenn Murray. Um, Brighton's first goal, a lot of people saying it was offside. You cannot be offside from an own goal, which the first goal was. Um, but a great week for Brighton, great result. So, going up against a West Ham side, who I've said I ain't going to mention too much about the VAR within the Manchester City game, because I want to mention it when I get to the Manchester City game. So, but with West Ham... Not picked up three points at the Amex so far since they've been playing down there and since Brighton's been up to the Premier League, obviously. Um, and I think Man City are going to be a bit scared with this one because they picked up such a heavy defeat against Manchester City. The next thing they're going to want to look at is Brighton attacking football and then West Ham go all guns blazing and Brighton just play slightly behind the West Ham back four, and then Brighton playing counter-attacking football. So with this one, I'm going to stick up for Brighton again, um, and that, and I will go for a 2-0 Brighton win. While I'm on the Brighton uh, side, just before I move on, um, I did get a comment. Uh, I was the only one out of a lot of people that predicted Brighton to beat Watford. Um, I know a lot of people say don't read a lot into pre-season, but ever since I've been doing this, I have looked at you know different teams in the Premier League, and the pattern of play is exactly the same. 
in a in a weird situ in a weird sort of way. So you know, but fair enough. You know, people you can predict what you want to predict. But I thought when I got that comment about Brighton, a lot of people reflect on last season, which you know, eighty days can change a lot. So let's move on. The next one is Everton versus Watford. Now Everton, 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 Everton um, lost. Uh, didn't lose. They drew nil nil with Palace. Red card, double yellow. Uh, obviously VAR is not allowed to be involved with the double yellow card. Um, as I've just said, with uh, Watford losing three nil to Brighton, uh, I did. Um, think Watford did not turn up on that game um, but Everton I thought deserved the three points against Crystal Palace I'm not going to lie um, but where do I call this one um, I think I'm going to give it to Everton again and I'm going to go for a 1-0 Everton win my next one is Norwich versus Newcastle now Norwich picked up a 5-0 uh, sorry a 4-1 defeat to uh, Liverpool and Newcastle losing 1 0 to Arsenal. And I ain't gonna get bogged down with the Arsenal goal, do I when I get down to Arsenal? But one thing I'm gonna say about this game, I am gonna throw it in Norwich's favour, and I'll tell you the result in a minute, and I'll tell you why I'm gonna do that. If you did watch the Newcastle Arsenal game, their back line was leaving so much space in behind. Then you had, um, and obviously the Arsenal goal, Aubameyang, you had two centre-backs, and all the two centre-backs was, one was getting drifted, and the other one was coming out, and Aubameyang just came in and behind. So this is why I'm going to give it to Norwich, and I'm going to go for a 3-0 Norwich win. Uh, the next one is Southampton versus Liverpool. Liverpool beat Norwich 4-1, as I've just said. And uh, Southampton um, losing to Burnley 3-0, as I've said it already. Liverpool with that sort of Norwich game, which, yet yeah, again, I did watch. Um, I think... I think that... Are oh, Southampton going to sit back and try and let Liverpool attack them? I thought Norwich did well up to that point, but once Liverpool got our first goal, it just all seemed to come to pot, a bit like a sound of Newcastle. But if Southampton can hold that line, I'm not expecting such a big scoreline for Liverpool this time. But um, as I'm going to call it, I'm going to give it to Liverpool. And I'm going to give it a 2-0 win. The next one is Manchester City versus Tottenham. Possibly the game of the weekend. Um, now Manchester City had a few VAR decisions. Which I'm going to talk about. Um, one was offside. Um, just millimetres offside. But uh, obviously offside's offside. Um, the penalty which got retaken and that's because Declan Rice went into the box before the ball was kicked um, but with this VAR it is literally it evens the game up so much that I'm actually loving it more um, I know probably a weird thing to say and you can call me what you like but I like my games to be so evenly matched that, you know, 250 million ain't going to show or, you know, something else ain't going to happen or, you know, all these things that happen. And the match officials have to be so tight and so together. Um, obviously, if you support a lower league club and you go up against, say, Manchester City, for example, you're... You see the referee mostly in favour with the top clubs. Um, but with VAR, they can't do it as much because 
the, the FA would see it and then it go on, t you know, on Teddy and the it would just be a big saga for the Premier League and the FA. So that's what else I'm liking about it as well. But Tottenham beating uh, Villa 3-1, I've stated that I've been on this game far too long. So I'm going to call this one a draw and I'm going to call this one a one-all scoreline. The next one is Sheffield United versus Crystal Palace. Sheffield United drawing with uh, Bournemouth, uh, Billy Sharp goal, one all. Um, and Crystal Palace, as I've already said, uh, you know, drawing with Everton. Um, now, with Crystal Palace not starting Wilfred Sahar in that Everton game, I thought that was a very bold move by Crystal Palace. Um, Sheffield United went from the start, um, but where, if you're a Crystal Palace fan, please feel free to comment. Where do you go with this Royal Fessor Sahar saga? Do you sit him on the bench? Do you start him? Do you, I mean, when I was looking at the lineup, I was like, what are you doing? But that's just my opinion. Um, but you've got, you know, and um, so. You know, where do you go with it? Let me know. Um, but because of that, because of leaving Sahar on the bench, I'm going to call this one a draw. I've just made my mind up. I'm going to call this one a draw, and I'm going to call this a nil-nil scoreline. The next one is Chelsea versus Leicester. Now Chelsea losing to United 4-0 and Leicester drawing to Wolverhampton 0-0 uh, yeah 0-0 um, yeah again that VAR decision which I'll get on with Wolves because I've got to do Wolves United in a minute but I'll talk to you about that in a minute Chelsea losing 4-0 to Manchester United are you joking? 4-0 I know your Chelsea fans probably you know screaming at the screen but I thought, yet yeah, again, Chelsea were good up until the point United scored that second goal more than the first. They got that second goal and Chelsea just opened up. I mean, to be honest, the way, way Chelsea were looking after that second goal, you could have got Lorry in there. But, you know, this is what I'm saying about opening up. You need to stay calm, stay proposed and just play the game. Um, but... Frank Lampard, I wouldn't say an easy game because there is no easy game in the Premier League, but an easier game. Um, so with this one, I'm going to give it to Chelsea again, and I'm going to go for a 2-1 scoreline for that one. My last one for this weekend, and I've already said their names, is Wolves versus Manchester United. Now, Wolves had an offside goal, and uh, not an offside goal, and a goal disallowed, sorry, thanks to VAR. Um, you know, we all know the Wolves. Um, I definitely know them because I've read up on them quite a lot throughout the summer. Um, if the ball touches your arm um, and it's out like that or wherever, um, you know, if it's flaking about, as I like to call it, um, the goal will be disallowed because it's controlled by your arm. Um, now, this is a question to all you fans. Would you like to see that changed? Uh, I can see what Wolves' argument is, but the rules are rules. Um, I've seen a lot of comments over it. Um, you know, with people saying, it's a bit like breaking the speed limit. You know, you're in a 30 mile zone. You go 31, 32, you still get flashed. Um, so, you know, it's the same sort of thing. But Wolves are Wolves. Um, very hard done by Wolves go disallowed, I, I will admit. But I can see why they disallowed it. Um, going up against Man United, as I said, beat Chelsea 4 0. Um, I'm not expecting an easy ride for Manchester United this time round. But because Wolves have got to play in Europe, I am going to stick up for Manchester United 
Now I'm going to go for a 2-1 scoreline for that one. But anyway, guys, I'm going to bring this video to an end. Guys, you know what to do. Give us a big fat thumbs up if you enjoy it. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now.